We're all taught how to live our lives and what it takes to be successful. But at the end of the day, what is it really all about? You have something special within you, something greater than yourself. Look beyond what's in front of you. Realize that you are put on this earth for a specific purpose. And in order to discover that, you have to start talking about it. And that starts now. Don't worry about the weather, because everything will be all right. Living Authentically with Gina Mazzetti. Thank you for joining us today, and welcome to the very first episode of Living Authentically. Now, to get us started today, let's begin by diving into authenticity as a whole. What does it mean to be authentic? What constitutes an authentic lifestyle? Can we all achieve some level of authenticity? And the answer is yes, we certainly can. Living authentically, it's all about being genuine, giving back to your community, acknowledging your purpose in life, and honoring it enough to ensure fulfillment for not only yourself, but for the better of society. When you are living authentically, you are tapping into your truth and aligning that very truth with everything you do. Susan Piver, author and meditation teacher, said it best when she said, living authentically is essentially when everything you're doing aligns in your inner world and your outer world. Now, when Piver talks about your inner world, she's talking about your gifts, your passions, and your feelings. When she speaks about your outer world, she's more so talking about your job, your home life, and helping out the community. So the big question is, is how can we align both of those two things together? And I have found myself constantly struggling with this, just like anybody else has. And it's all about really discovering your purpose in life and finding a way that you can use that purpose for the greater of society and not only for yourself. And so that is what my intention is for this show. For this show, we're gonna be talking about really great pivotal topics that are only gonna inspire yourself, but also inspire other people and help everyone else in the meantime. And so a little bit about myself is that a lot of the people who know me is that they know I am dyslexic. And for those of you at home who don't know what dyslexia is, it is essentially a learning disability that affects a person's memory, it affects their comprehension, as well as their ability to learn. And when you are dyslexic, there is a big emotional component that you experience that not a lot of people talk about. And being dyslexic, I've experienced that emotional side on a whole nother level. And this is why I'm so passionate about living authentically. Because when you are living authentically, it's a lot of different things that can happen. You're not only being yourself, but you're doing things for the better for yourself. So for example, it's when the college student goes to his counselor and says, no, I actually don't wanna be a doctor. Yes, it does pay more, but I'd rather be a comedian because that's what gets me excited to wake up in the morning. That's what really fills up my cup. Instead of the half, the glass is half full, it's half empty, that's what fills it up for him. And so when you're not authentic, it's a whole nother story. It's when you go to the store and you see the salesman basically trying to get the sale, trying to get his commission, rather than actually serving the customer's needs and what the customer genuinely wants. And so there's a big distinguishment between living authentically and not living authentically. And I think it's important to acknowledge that because at the end of the day, we wanna be able to be happy with ourselves and do better for everyone else. And for me, for motivation, I knew it was my calling for a lot of things. Number one is I couldn't sleep at night because I would find myself in front of the mirror motivating myself. I would find myself talking to my friends about an issue they would have. And I said, you know what? It's not called an issue. It's rather an opportunity for improvement. How can we help you with what you're going through? And so that's what I found was my passion. Because a lot of times we are taught what to want and when to want it. We are taught what to believe in and what to ignore. And I think that's crucial because we think that we're given this list in life of exactly what we need. But if only we just Get, gather the superficial satisfaction and put it to the side and ask yourself, what is it that's gonna make you happy and help everyone else? And so recently I was offered this show, but before I go into that, I do wanna talk about my experience and what I have to offer you guys. 
I am currently a motivational speaker, and I speak to different hospitals, schools, and organizations. I am also a certified professional life coach. I coach people on the topic of dyslexia, as well as other self-help topics as well. And I am now an author of A Shout Out for Dyslexics, The Emotional Side. And that's a new book about dyslexia that just came out. And I'm currently in the process of writing my second book on dyslexia and the workplace. So as you can see, I'm really trying to fulfill my purpose in life. And it's something that I've been very proud of because as a child, I was bullied a lot for being lazy, quote unquote, or for being called stupid because of my learning disability. And I think a lot of times we don't give people the opportunity who are quiet in the, in the corner. What's actually going on? If they're overly, if they're a troublemaker, what's actually happening? And I was one of those people being dyslexic who had those quiet and rebellious behaviors, but nobody took the time to say, what's actually happening here? What's wrong with this child so we can help her? And I really wanna give the opportunity for people to do that, to actually speak their truth and to help other people as well as doing that. Now, for the TV show, I believe the reason why I accepted this show is because I have a lot to say. But at the same token, I have much more to hear. And I think that's important because a lot of times we're so busy getting our message across and telling people our thoughts and our feelings. But what about the person, as I said, in the corner who doesn't talk very much? A lot of people have so much to say and if we just hear them out, we can actually hear their purpose and let it enlighten us as well. So for this show, we're gonna have some phenomenal guests on. We're gonna have a gentleman who essentially found his passion later on in life and he was ignoring it because he was stuck in the corporate world. But what did he do the second he discovered his purpose in life? And he's finally living it. So we're gonna be able to see how his life has changed since then. We're also gonna have a very inspirational woman from Michigan and she has an organization that is gonna enlighten us about how important it is to mentor the youth and especially females. We also have a man who has a very rough background and he's found his way on the streets into a hot yoga studio. So what does that look like, finding your purpose for there? And so for this show, as you can see, it's gonna be a lot of compelling guests and I'm gonna help us along the way discover our purpose as well as hearing out other people's too. So again, this is gonna be a great season. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And we're gonna up next be with our first guest of the show, Jason Wall, and he's gonna share his road to authenticity. Welcome back to Living Authentically, and thanks for joining us today. So we are back with my very first guest of the show, Jason Wall. And he is actually a musician and a drummer, and he has a great organization we're gonna be talking about today, which is called Future Youth Records. Jason, welcome. Hi, Gina. Honored to be your first guest. I am so excited about it. Congratulations. Thank you so much. So my very first question for you is, tell us about your purpose and how you essentially found your road to authenticity. I started off, you know, nine years old, uh, you know, musician in school, um, and I played all through high school, and I got to a point where it's like, where was I going to go? And so I started off at college, but what I learned in college is actually wasn't for me. Um, but when I was going to college in San Mateo, I was in a, um, a jazz ensemble. Hmm. Um, I'd gotten a terrible accident when I was 17 years old, where my wrist was completely destroyed, so the doctor said I never play the drums again. So part of my rehab was doing this jazz ensemble at, at College San Mateo. And the band director said, um, uh, you know, I want you to join Stanford's big band. Wow. And at the time, you know, I really didn't have experience playing big band. I didn't really know how to read music too well. Um, so, so what that did is it launched me into a world that I saw, wow, I'm surrounded by all these very smart kids that had a clear path in life, and here I was, kind of, what am I gonna do? But I always knew music was my path. So then I started a career as a professional drummer. Started doing some session work, played on some video game, um, uh, you know, records, that kind of stuff. And started touring the world a little bit with some artists, and then it got to the point where it was like, okay, what am I gonna do now? So I, you know, invested all this time from this kid with a banged up arm to now, you know, playing at a world-class level. Um, had some amazing private teachers, Steve Smith from Journey, Louis Belson, um, who started the double bass drums wow. back in the big band right. era. Um, and, and so then I started thinking, 
I have to do something with this. I have to give back. So I started teaching. So you felt that spark. Yeah. That yeah. there is something, I have, there's something onto this. Right. Like it's not just something temporary. I have to do something with this gift. Right, right. I didn't I know what that. it was yet. So right. it, it was, I felt I had to educate. Started right. giving lessons. Because then it was like, well, how am I going to make a living? And one way you can make a living is, is um, you know, teach. Asking As, yourself, is it realistic? Right, right, right. So then I found, well, I, I've never been really motivated by money. I've always been motivated by purpose. I just don't care about that other stuff. And I believe that's part of what corrupts the world. And so I didn't want to be another guy that was just going to try to make the most money playing and teaching and, and all that stuff. So I was teaching a rock camp called Soundwall at UC Santa Cruz for, for kids. I did that for 14 years, actually. And uh, on year 12, there was a, a student I had. And, and this is what sort of launched the whole future youth concept. But uh, Peter Smith was his name. And I asked him, you know, are you going to go to Soundwall this year? Because I thought every kid can go to Soundwall as a nonprofit. And what I found is, is he says, well, I can't afford it. And I said, what do you mean you can't afford it? He says, well, my, you know, father's in construction. And this is at the time when the economy took a dip. And couldn't afford the, the, um, the tuition. So what I did is I donated my pay. And then I went to my sponsors and friends, and I raised about $7,000 total. Because wow. I just found that ridiculous, that, right. that a kid like this couldn't go to a camp to benefit his life and enrich himself in his, in his musicality because he didn't have the money. So, so what that did is it sparked Soundwall to, to kind of raise more money on, on, on their own to offer more scholarships. And so what I saw is, wow, this effort that I put in, now we're starting to see kids that didn't have the economic means coming in and, and are able to benefit from this tremendous experience. And, and by the way, Peter went on to win the drum award that year. Yeah, yeah. So, so that just lit, you know, this, this that spark just hit a in nerve. me. Yeah, yeah. And, but I knew I wanted to do more, and I still didn't know what it was. And so my career's, you know, going along, and I'm playing with all these high-profile musicians and doing some pretty big gigs. And, and, and I just, then one day, the, you just put it out there in the universe, and it came, Future Youth Records. Because um, at that time, I started producing more. Um, and what I found is that the kind of music I was producing really wasn't doing it for me. And what do you mean by that, that the music wasn't doing it for you? It's what's it saying, you know, what's it saying, what's it saying, what's it doing? Because what, music has such a great purpose in influencing culture. Right. And so then I started, you know, thinking like, wow. You know, if you look at Billboard's, you know, top 100, like I just did this a couple weeks ago, and seven out of the ten were all degrading towards women. And this is what, so now my passion as a producer, as a drummer, musician, with all these contacts in the industry, Future Youth Records. And I think it's great to be mindful about that, because oftentimes we listen to our favorite radio songs and things along those lines, but right. are we really listening to the lyrics? Right. Do we know what kind of impact the song is making on the youth? on any everyday person in the car listening to that. Right, right. No, they're not. They're, it's just very infectious hooks. Right. Infectious rhythm. Um, and, and unfortunately, it's, it's you know, to, for where I sit, it's destro destroying our society. Mm -hmm. And that's why I want to step in. You can't really complain about something. It's really easy to complain. But it's a whole other thing to identify a problem and then come up with a solution. And that's what Future Youth Records is to this. Exactly. And so thankfully, it's becoming so well received, you know, in the industry and, and beyond. Your mother, Julie Mazzetti. Um, just the, the angel she is, um, and connecting me with some phenomenal people, um, like Chris Porter um, from Ecology, who's just you know a, an incredible human being. Um, so we're, we're seeing a lot of you know just a lot of passion and excitement for what we're doing as an organization, and people really believing in it. And I think that's interesting too. So you went to College of San Mateo. I did. That's where I went. I had such a great time at that school. And I think it's interesting how you were in school, you didn't really find your place yet, and you knew there was something more to life than just that. Right. And I think that's really great to acknowledge because a lot of times, there's a lot of kids in school like that. But they just think, well, that's okay. I'm told to get my degree. I'm told to get a job. Let me go through the checklist. But at the same time, there's that fulfillment piece missing. And you were able to find that piece. And so I think that's great to tell people at home that if you haven't found it yet, get going. Like, you right. need to start getting that. Well, one way people can do is just ask yourself a simple question, what's it all for? Right. And when I started doing that, I was able to see, well, why am I doing certain things? Because you get conditioned to do in your life, and then the bills and this, and you end up kind of in this, in this hamster wheel that doesn't never seem to go anywhere. Right. And we've just learned as a society to find contentment in that. Absolutely. Well, we just accept this. This is, I accept why this is. And I just, I never got in the hamster wheel. Mm. But even musicians, a lot of my musician friends, you know, the, the gigs, they can't get out of them they, to go off and start their own things because it's, it pays the bills and it's very hard to get out of that. So I, I purposely set up my career to never be in a hamster wheel. 
So I can, I can change, I can do whatever I need to do at any given time. And I'm ready for it and I'm prepared. You know? And can we talk more about that title? So Future Youth Records, yeah. that's, that's a great title. And can you expand more on the future and the youth? Yeah, Tell yeah. us more about that. So how is this going to really help the youth? Yeah. Well, I mean, one way is, you know, if you want to see what society's crystal ball is, look at kids. Hmm. That's the future. Hmm. Everything is always the kids. So, you know, if I'm not happy with something today, I invest in the kids for tomorrow and the years to come. So that's sort of, you know, why that name is, is there and sort of what our purpose is as an organization is to always be invested in, in those kids. And have you developed these personal relationships with the kids in particular? Yes, yes. And can yeah. you expand more on that? Yeah, so we started doing some programs, um, and one in particular had an astounding um, transformational result um, for at-risk girls in the Mission District. And these girls had no experience whatsoever with music, okay. um, never been into a studio, and these are like really you know, troubled young ladies. And so um, what ended up happening is we did a songwriting program for them, um, and it was supposed to be eight weeks, but the eight weeks they wanted more. And in the first eight weeks, they talked about the things that were frustrating them in society. Great. And then, so what so, a great outlet to just channel their negativity into positivity and inspiration. Right. right. Well, what's great about songwriting is because like other, like sports or, or other art forms, they're more, um, uh, uh, you know, passive in, in, in their therapeutic effects. Absolutely. You know, they're, they're more abstract. But with songwriting, you face your demons face to face. So you're just looking at them because you're writing them. And you can interpret those too, but that's what, the, what this program did for these young ladies is they were able to write those feelings and sing about it, you know. Um, even though they, they couldn't sing, we got them to sing, you know. Um, so the director asked us to do another eight weeks and for which we did, and, um, and then the second eight weeks, it just blew my mind. Now they were talking about rising up over the things that were, um, you know, they were struggling with. And so uh, when I met with the director of, you know, maybe a couple months after that program ended, I brought Dr. Fink from Prince and the Revolution. You know, I brought him in to meet the girls. So they met him? Wow. Yeah, 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 wow. yeah, yeah. And, um, and I asked Susanna, the director, I said, so what, what's happened all these months later? And, and she said, well, I don't know if you knew this, but one of the girls was suicidal the week before coming into your program. And through songwriting, she was able to overcome that. So once again, I think we have to, you know, look for validation when we're doing things. Of and course. so anything that I've ever done in my career, just personal life, I've always looked for validation. Mm -hmm. And the universe, or whatever you want to call it, provides that validation if you just pay attention to it and don't force it. And I, I love the whole topic about the universe because I truly believe thoughts become things. Right. And this started with a tiny little thought and then it scaled out to help the youth right. and help these women that are going through such adversity and now they're able to use music as an outlet right. to unleash any negativity they were feeling. Right. So I, I love that. Right. And right. now what's going to be perpetuating this success even more so? What's going to really get it off the floor? Well, we have to keep doing more programs like this, investing in our youth, investing in social causes. You know, there's a youth or, you know, like you talked about bullying. Exactly. I mean, you know, there's a lot of epidemics facing our youth and we want to, you know, tackle those on through songwriting and bringing in legendary musicians to come work with the kids. So we got a couple programs coming up in um, March around International Women's Month to help young women empower themselves through, uh, through media. So they're gonna basically um, rise up against the degradation and objectification of women in music today. Wow. Um, and then we're doing another program that's a teen drug and alcohol prevention program in the town of Pacifica. So we're gonna um, target kids that are dealing with addiction themselves or are closely related to it through family or friends. And 18 kids, and and Chris Porter, you know, graciously was right on board and with Recology, and so they're funding it, and we're going to be able to get this program going and help the kids in our town. And then I want to take this, and I'm not going to stop there. We're going to keep going. And, and I love that. And can you talk more about, as I was saying in the first segment, so how we are given this checklist of what we are supposed to do in life and when to do it and why we should do it. If you didn't have this as your purpose, how would your life be right now? I don't even think like that. That doesn't even enter my, my soul. So it has to be there. It's, and I think uh, that's so important to identify. Yeah, yeah. I think a, p a problem we make is it's too much in the mind. Right. And like Eckhart Tolle has a great book, you know, Power of Now, which I've read several times and need to right. keep continue reading that. But um, no, I think if you just, life is pretty simple if you just pay attention. It gets complicated when you start serving the wrong purposes. Mm -hmm. and, and you start um, you know, filling it with things like greed and things that you're never gonna be satisfied, like you know, fundamentally you know, fueled by ego. I think you have to just, just ask, ask that question. What's it all for? Why do you need the three houses, the 10 houses? Maybe there's a good reason for it, I don't know, but ask yourself the question. I bet you a lot of times you're gonna, well, I don't need to do that. And then that triggers consciousness. 
And also, what? How old were you when you discovered that this was this is something real for you? Oh, I don't. You know, I don't know because I don't really f focus on age and things like that. But if I had to guess, it's probably five years ago. Five years ago. Yeah, that this. And I, I think that's also important to talk about that. A lot of times we are so confident in this notion called time, more than we are in ourselves. Yep. And people can compliment you and say, oh, you did such a great job at that organization, or compliment your looks. But when it comes to time, we are overly confident that we have all the time in the world to, to fulfill our purpose and to do something. Oh, we can do it in five years from now or a year from now. But I think that you're realizing that we have to make the best use of our time, no matter, no matter what. Yeah. So when you wake up in the morning and you're not serving the ego, you, the issue of time really doesn't matter so much. You know, as long as, you know, I, I have two things I like to do every day. Wake up thankful that I'm here another day and go to bed grateful for Love all that. my experiences, no matter what they were, Love because that. they were all meant to teach me something. Wake up thankful and go to bed grateful. Go to bed grateful. Yeah. Jason, this has been amazing. Thank I you so much. so excited. First guest, thank you so much. And I hope you guys have found this inspirational as I have. And we're gonna be right back with Living Authentically and just to wrap it up for you guys. As I mentioned earlier, welcome back to my very first episode of Living Authentically. Now, that was just such a great and compelling interview with Jason Wall from Future Youth Records. And going back to what I mentioned in the beginning, although we all have so much to say, we have so much more to hear. And I think we can't really take that lightly because everyone has something to provide us and to help out the community as well. And so what Jason has charted, us, has charted for us today shows that you can take that thought and make it a thing. Something that simple. So don't be afraid to really put your passion to the forefront. And I think a lot of times we leave the approval of others at the forefront. We gotta put that at the back burner at some point because that's gonna be hard living someone else's life. And what Jason has showed for us is that you can take authenticity to another level where you can help other people and make an impact in their life as well. And so throughout this season, like I said, we will be having guests like that. Now, a little exercise I would like us to do before ending the show is to ask yourself three questions. And I'm hoping that your answers to these questions can really help to see if you are living that authentic lifestyle. The first question I have to ask you is, what do you love? Something so simple. I love going to yoga class. I love going to the gym. I love hanging out with my family members. I love tea, something that simple. What do you genuinely love? That's the first question. And my second question is, what do you focus on? So do you read the newspaper? Do you, what kind of apps do you have on your phone? Little things like that. So what do you focus on? Do you focus on when you look in the mirror, all that is wrong with you? Or do you focus on all that is right? Really ask yourself and be honest. And my third question for you is, what do you invest your valuable time doing? And really think about that. Go look at your calendar. Go think back to your schedule. And so those answers, ask yourself, do they align? Does what you focus on and what you love align with what you invest your valuable time doing? Because honestly, they should. Because why would we not be doing what it is that we love? And so put the checklist to the side. Put your parents' approval. You can respect it. You can honor it, your loved one's approval. But think for yourself because ultimately, it's only your life. And so as you go through those answers, ask yourself how you can change your schedule to tailor it to what would make you feel most fulfilled. Now, those are some personal to-dos for you to do at home. And I'm really excited about that because we're gonna have guests, like I said, that are gonna teach us their road to authenticity. We're gonna be having segments like that where we can, I can coach you and ask you what else do you guys want as viewers to hear from and what kind of to-do list I can help you to make your life a little better and a little easier for you. Now, as you can see, for this show, Living Authentically, it's gonna help a lot of people out to find that very purpose and make something out of it. So I can't thank you guys enough for tuning in to my very first episode and look forward to a few shows coming up. 
So again, my name is Gina Mazzetti and this is Living Authentically. Well, don't worry about the weather. Don't worry if it rains all night. Well, don't